back to this video. For a while now, people have been curious about the relationship between 5 alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride in regards to the impact on testosterone levels, particularly for those of us who are dedicated to resistance training. Now, there's one camp of people that claim that taking 5 alpha reductase inhibitors like finasteride and dutasteride can harm your strength gains, reduce your testosterone, and then you won't be able to do shit in the gym and you'll look like just some skinny dude. Then there are other people that say that, oh, if you take dutasteride, especially dutasteride, you'll be uh, anabolic and you'll be strong and you can do whatever you want and you'll build a lot of muscle because it boosts testosterone. Now, those two are like the extreme ends because they're both wrong, right? Um, it's just that the people that claim that if you take dutasteride or finasteride, you'll see a rise in testosterone, that is true, but it's not going to be an, an like some sort of anabolic gain right to the point where you're going to see a significant a large improvement in the gym and your physique now for this to make sense we have to understand overall why this isn't the case for both of these sort of extreme point of views now for a quick overview finasteride and dutasteride work by inhibiting the 5 alpha reductase enzyme now it does this respect to finasteride it inhibits the type 2 isoform of the 5 alpha reductase enzyme, and dutasteride just eliminates all isoforms, type 1, type 2, type 3, of the 5 alpha reductase enzyme. Now, it is the 5 alpha reductase enzyme that turns testosterone into DHT. With that sort of conversion decreased, you will see an uptick in testosterone, right? Because now there's more testosterone that isn't being turned into DHT. So really, it's not that you're gaining more testosterone. This is testosterone you already would have produced. It's just that you're not going to essentially lose testosterone um, that's being turned into DHT. So yeah, now you'll end up with a bit more testosterone circulating in your system, whether it's free testosterone or total testosterone or both. So right away, that is the mechanism of action of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors. So people who say take finasteride or take uh, dutasteride, you'll reduce your T levels. They don't know what they're talking about. Ignore them. Block them. They're wrong. That is not the case. Now, on a 1 milligram daily dose of finasteride, your DHT levels are likely to drop between 60 to 70 percent. This is what the uh, literature tends to show us. And this is mainly because finasteride, like I said before, targets the type 2 isoform of the 5 alpha reductase enzyme. So, in regards to the testosterone increase, given this drop in DHT, you can expect your testosterone levels to rise by around 10 to 15 percent. Now, dutasteride, like I said before, offers a more robust action, inhibiting both and all type 1, type 2. Um, people don't really talk about it, but also type 3 isoforms of the 5 alpha reductase enzyme. And this can result in a 90 percent reduction or more in DHT levels. And because of this, T levels can range from 10 to 20% increase from your baseline. Now over here, this is where people are like, wow, wait, I can get a 20% increase on dutasteride. So this means that I can become anabolic and get stronger by taking dutasteride. Mm, well, let's keep things a bit more in perspective. Now in regards to endogenous, like your naturally produced androgens, right? If it's going up by that particular range, if you're not taking, you know, any sort of outside, like, like roid use, if you're not indu inducing anything into the system, um, you're not going to see any sort of anabolic gains. But before I even go into it, in regards to DHT, DHT is a paracrine hormone, and paracrine hormones exert their effects in a localized manner. DHT doesn't have a primary role with the musculoskeletal system. This is responsible for our muscle building and our you know our strength essentially right this distinction is crucial because while dht is a potent androgen it's not the driving force behind muscle development or strength gains its pronounced effects are mainly felt in the skin prostate and to the concern of many our hair follicles given this understanding the drop in dht levels due to finasteride and dutasteride doesn't raise concerns about hindering strength or muscle progression in the gym so yeah like i said DHT, when it's produced naturally in the body, you're not going to see any sort of anabolic gains because the site in which it operates in doesn't contribute to 
strength gains or muscle development. Now, there are people that say, well, what about the DHT derived steroids? DHT is still anabolic. And if you're introducing it to your system, it's not going to be only at those sites that naturally it would be found at because that's where it's turned into DHT, right? If you're just straight up injecting it and introducing it into your system outside of those particular sites of operation where DHT can be produced, then of course you're going to get some sort of strength gain and muscle development. But in its natural state, no, you're not going to find DHT in the musculoskeletal system unless you're fucking putting it there. So that's pretty much what I'm saying. Taking exogenous hormones isn't the same as your natural production of hormones. Now for me, before I took finasteride, I did some blood work and I found out that my T levels were just naturally high. So looking at this particular uh, sheet of blood work, this was August, 2021. And around that time was also when I started August, 2021, early September was around that time I started going to the gym. This is a uh, 2021. So I have both total T and free T. The total testosterone score came out to 824 nanograms per deciliter, which is pretty up there. It's not uh, super high, but it's at the uh, higher end of the reference range. In regards to my free T, I had 155.7 picograms per milliliter, which in regards to the reference range, it's between 35 to 155 picograms per milliliter. So yeah, high baseline testosterone levels before finasteride or dutasteride. Now recently, I also did blood work too. Now let's look at the most recent blood work from about a month ago. Now keep in mind at this time, I'm taking finasteride five times a week and dutasteride twice a week. So here we go. My total testosterone is 915 nanograms per deciliter. My free testosterone is 171.3 picograms per milliliter now especially the free testosterone like before i even did finasteride right you can as you can see on the screen um i already had high free testosterone and now while on finasteride and dutasteride i i have a bit more higher right a higher degree of uh free testosterone my total testosterone also went up and it's approaching again that higher end of the total testosterone score but i want to put this into perspective although my free testosterone is still slightly above reference range right everything is within reason right i'm not getting any sort of crazy anabolic readings like i'm, I'm not like four thousand nanograms per deciliter of total testosterone and 300 picograms per milliliter of free testosterone right this is all within somewhat normal reference range, right? So people who think that if you take 5-alpha reductase inhibitors, you're going to have some sort of anabolic gain in your strength and muscle development, that's not true. That, that's a huge misconception based on the premise of 5-alpha reductase inhibitors increasing testosterone, right? It increases it within a reason. So you can see that I had an 11% hike from 824 nanograms per deciliter to 915 nanograms per deciliter. And this increase aligns well with what one should anticipate from using finasteride with an additional bump possibly from dutasteride. Likewise, from 155.7 picograms per milliliter to 171.3 picograms per milliliter, which is about a 10% increase, this fits well into the ballpark of what 5-alpha reductase inhibitors typically deliver. So at the end of the day, if you think finasteride or dutasteride is going to harm your muscle development, that's not true. I already made a video about this about a year ago when I was in San Francisco. It was in regards to finasteride and dutasteride and whether or not it harms your strength gains. Something like that in the title. I don't remember my titles, but I'll put that video in the description. It's a much more straightforward explanation. So go to the gym, you know, work out, do what you have to do. And yeah, just be consistent. If you think finasteride or dutasteride is harming your gym progression, and then you end up doing something stupid, thinking that you have to take roids to compensate for that, that's like, I mean, good luck. You're going to lose your uh, hair follicles. But 
you have to understand there are many factors such as your damn sleep schedule or your quality of sleep, how much you're eating, right? Your your diet, just the quality of your diet, the nutrition that you get, and just other factors like maybe your mental health too that contributes to the performance in the gym, right? So pinning all that on finasteride or dutasteride is a, is a bit asinine in my opinion. So make sure there are other faculties in your life that you have in order that may be potentially impacting your progress in the gym. And make sure you're doing the exercises correctly. Now, I'm not the best form dude here. Like, I do things a bit shoddy sometimes, but I try to get to the proper form and, you know, actually practice form every now and again. Now, I have a good resource for you guys if you want to work out. There's this website called Muscle Wiki. I'll, I'll leave that in the description, but it shows typical movements for body parts that you want to work out and either seek it you know bigger or stronger you just click that particular body part and you'll see some videos with some explanations on how to do a particular movement or workout but yeah that's it for this video i try to make it a bit more commentary-ish not just reading from a script just trying to just talk directly to the audience and make it a bit more natural so to speak so if you got to the end of this video comment in the comment section below vegetables yes vegetables because eating your vegetables is good for you right also fruits as well me strange fact about myself i had an oral allergy to fruit that i didn't start with when i was born it developed when i was 10 years old and i had to take allergy shots to address it and i took those allergy shots for about i want to say eight years so yeah i'm good now but yeah, why am I talking about fruit when the uh, the magic word is vegetables? I guess if you're still listening, you can comment vegetables and fruit, right? That's that's if you're really, really listening, if you really got to this point. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you on the next video. Peace.